So let's now address the elephant in the room. If some matrices are diagonalizable and others aren't, how do we know which is which? Well, there's a test for that. In fact, uh, there's sort of two tests for this. Um, so this is a theorem which tells us how to test a matrix for diagonalizability. Now, we have to know the eigenvalues. But uh, so if we know the eigenvalues, then we can do it. So let's say uh, if, uh, well, what the theorem is telling us is that any n by n matrix A is diagonalizable if and only if the sum of the geometric multiplicities is equal to the size of our matrix. Now, back when we learned about geometric multiplicity, one thing we said was that the sum of the geometric multiplicities uh, is less than or equal to the size of the matrix. What this is saying is that the matrix is diagonalizable precisely when the sum of the geometric multiplicities equals the size of the matrix. An equivalent way to say this is that um, is by requiring each eigenvalue to have geometric multiplicity equal to its algebraic multiplicity. Remember that the sum of the algebraic multiplicities always equals the size of the matrix, and the geometric multiplicity of any eigenvalue can never exceed the algebraic multiplicity. So the only way for the geometric multiplicities to sum to equal the size of the matrix is for each one individually to equal its, uh, the corresponding algebraic multiplicity. So let's see this uh, theorem in action. So uh, here we have a specific three by three matrix and someone is giving us the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are negative two and nine. In fact, they're also giving us bases for the eigenspaces. The eigenspace of A where lambda equals negative two is spanned by the single vector one, zero, negative one. And the eigenspace of A for lambda equals nine is spanned by the single vector zero, one, negative one. Well, what is this information telling us? Well, if the eigenspace of A for lambda equals negative two is spanned by just this one vector, that's telling us that the dimension of this eigenspace is one, which is the same thing as the geometric multiplicity. So the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals negative two for this matrix as an eigenvalue is equal to one. And the same goes for the second eigenspace. For lambda equals nine, the eigenspace is spanned by one vector. And so that also tells me that um, the geometric multiplicity of nine is equal to one. Well, those are the only two eigenvalues here. So uh, how do I test for diagonalizability? I add those two geometric multiplicities together and I compare the result to the size of the matrix. Here, the sum of the two geometric multiplicities equals two, which is less than three. So that tells me that this matrix A is not diagonalizable. So no matter how hard I try, I'll never be able to diagonalize this particular three by three matrix. Um, okay, so let's say that our matrix passes the test. Well, how do I produce the factorization X times D times X inverse? Well, we already know that D has on its diagonal all of the eigenvalues of our matrix accounting for multiplicity. What about X? Well, as we saw in an example previously, the columns of X will always be linearly independent eigenvectors of A. More specifically, if I go to find the jth column of X, that column will be one of the eigenvectors corresponding to the jth eigenvalue sitting on the diagonal of D. So if I want to produce A equals X times D times X inverse, what I need to do is I need to find bases for all of the eigenspaces and then put those basis vectors into the columns of X. So let's see this in an example. So here we have a three by three matrix A and this matrix is diagonalizable. And in fact, it diagonalizes as X times D times X inverse where X is unknown here, but we're told that D is uh, the diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are three, three, and eight. Let's walk through the process of finding X here. So uh, what we need to start with is we need to find the eigenspaces. Well, the eigenvalues of A are three and eight because those are the uh, distinct diagonal entries of D. 
we can then go to our matrix A and find bases for our eigenspaces. For lambda equals three, we're finding that our basis for the eigenspace is given by the vector one, zero, negative one, and zero, one, one. For lambda equals eight, we get one uh, uh, basis vector for this eigenspace, and that's the vector one, one, negative one. So what do we do with this information? Well, the, the eigenvectors that we've produced as bases for these two eigenspaces can be used to construct the columns of this unknown matrix X. First, we have, we have our first uh, eigenvector uh, or our first basis vector of the eigenspace for lambda equals three. That becomes our first column of X. Then we have our next, next basis vector for the eigenspace where lambda equals three. That becomes our next column of X. And we're doing those two columns first because our first two entries on the diagonal of D are three and three. So these two columns are columns one and two of X, which are I, the linearly independent eigenvectors for lambda equals three. And we're using three because three, that's the first two entries on the diagonal of D here. Then we go to our next eigenvalue, lambda equals eight. For lambda equals eight, we have one eigenvector here. That's one, one, negative one. And that will become our third column of X here. And again, note that this third column of X is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals eight here. So this gives us our factorization now. A is X times D times X inverse, where X is this particular three by three matrix. The columns are linearly independent eigenvectors of our matrix. You can sort of see here why it's so important for the sum of the geometric multiplicities to equal the size of the matrix. If that were not the case, so maybe um, instead of for lambda equals three, we didn't have two eigenvectors here as a basis, but only one. Well, we would put all of our eigenvectors into X and X wouldn't end up being a square matrix, so we couldn't invert X. The last thing I want to mention here is that um, there was no particular rhyme or reason to the order we chose here. Uh, if we wanted to, we can sort of shuffle entries around. So if instead of writing D as 338, uh, there's nothing preventing me from writing D as 383. But if I were to do that, I would have to um, adjust the ordering of the columns of X. So the first column of X needs to be one of the eigenvectors for lambda equals three. The second column needs to be one of the eigenvectors for lambda equals eight. And the third column would have to be one of the eigenvectors for lambda equals three, the other one. Um, if I wanted to, I can change D again. I could uh, write eight uh, on the di uh, diagonal entry first and then three and three. That's fine, but if I do that, I need to adjust the columns of X. The first column needs to be an eigenvector for lambda equals eight. And then the second two need to be linearly independent eigenvectors for lambda equals uh, three here. Um, and of course, if I wanted to, I could switch those last two columns around while keeping the threes on, as the last two entries of the diagonal here, because those are still I, uh, linearly independent eigenvectors uh, uh, for uh, A where lambda equals three. So we have freedom to choose the ordering on the diagonal of D as long as we also change the ordering of the columns of X. All of those choices give us a valid factor factorization, A equals X times D times X inverse.